Okay. You guys know me past Samson, dispensations. Where well, examining the life that's real, we want to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, first thing we want to clarify is that throughout the Bible, God is dealing with three sets of people. Throughout the Bible, God is dealing with three sets of people. We're going to go and we're going to uh, identify that in a few minutes. Now, God is dealing with Jew, the Jews, Israel, which is Israel. He's dealing with the Gentiles, and then he's dealing with a group of people called the church. The church. Okay, now, all this is important in rightly dividing the word of God. We must also bring into an understanding that the Bible is a dispensational plan, which means that the different characters of divine administration suited to the different times in which such administrations are exercised, administered. Uh, the way God deals with first Israel because you have Noah's time. He was dealing with Noah. He was dealing with Adam and Eve in the garden. But then he has Moses and he's dealing with a group of people, set apart people called the Israels, uh, the Jews. Then we go on over when we fast forward, we get on over into the New Testament. Jesus has come to the house of Israel. The house of Israel rejects him. So the greatest mystery, which is a sacred secret, of the Bible, the greatest mystery that was that's found in the Bible, one of the greatest secrets of the Bible, was God giving it to a group of people called the Gentiles, and knocking a man down that persecuted the truth, the church, Acts nine. A man that persecuted the church, which his name was Saul, God knocked Saul down, picked him up, Paul ordained him an apostle to a group of people that had no right to even be a Christian. So he sent Paul, an apostle, to this Gentile people to perform the revelations of what he wanted this Gentile people to be and to do. Now, there's certain things that we got to set as a foundation before we begin to teach. And John 16, 13 is one of the foundational principles because we need to set precedent. Because we want to rightly divide the truths of the word of God. And in order for you to rightly divide the truths of the word of God, you've got to keep the eight dispensations that he's administering or dispensing to the group of people that he's dealing with, you've got to keep them set apart. For instance, for instance, for instance. If God did not give salvation to the Gentiles till he sent Paul as an apostle to them, or a pastor, teacher, or a Bible scholar, would it be right for you to talk to the Gentiles about the law, which they did not come up under, because they didn't come up under the dispensation of the law. They came up under the dispensation of grace. So the only thing the Gentiles would be credited towards is the dispensation of grace. Because they knew nothing about the law. They didn't even have a God when the law was applied. Yeah, I know that's kind of controversial for some of you, but that's just the truth. God never reached out to the Gentiles until he chose Saul to become Paul. Acts 9. Then he told Ananias, go over on the street called Straight. Lay hands on him because he is a chosen vessel to me. He was going to send this man that had blinds on the street called Straight. He sent Ananias to lay hands on Saul so that the blindness would fall off his eyes so that he could go to the Gentiles for God. That means God chose Paul. 
All this is important and rightly dividing. So therefore, we've got three group of people. We, we need to reiterate this. You've got Israel, you've got the Gentiles, and you've got the church. Those are the only through the three groups of people that God is dealing with as far as being his people and set apart to be his people from Genesis to Revelation. So now, standing order in 2021, who is God at who is he administering his plan to? Who is the group of people that was in this great mystery? Who is the group of people that was chosen by God before the foundation of the world that was crucified with Jesus and resurrected with Jesus as a many member body in Jesus, the beloved son of God, placed over them as head. And if you'll notice about the second set of people, they were not like the Jews who fought naturally other tribes of people. This second set of people with Hebrews 3 had a heavenly calling. They were partakers with a heavenly calling. They were made sons and daughters by a heavenly calling and sealed with the Holy Spirit. But their anointing was never to fight against flesh and blood. Their anointing was to fight against spirits, principalities, rulers of darkness. So the Gentile people worked in dominion to subdue on a realm, on a sphere called the spiritual realm because they were spiritual people. They worshiped in spirit and in truth. So they were birthed in the dispensation of grace, drafted in in the dispensation of grace. Let us pray before we roll too far. Spirit of the living God, in the strong name of Jesus, first and foremost, Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing. We thank you, Lord, for your logo, swimming of word. Father, we ask that open hearts, open ears, open minds. Lord, give us understanding of what it is you're doing. Father, I ask, Lord, that you touch the world, Lord, because we realize that we're in chaotic times. Father, those wounds that you have, that you're going to bring in just before the great and dreadful day of the coming of your son, Jesus. Father, I ask, Lord, that you send an anointing to break the yoke of bondage and sin, break the curse, and set them free. Saturate us, Lord, saturate us, Lord, with your reign of word, that we may have wisdom and get understanding, and with all our getting get understanding, that we may run on to see what the end is going to be. We want to go by John, the 16th chapter, the Gospel of John, the 16th chapter. And we want to look at John 16, 12. But we are here for John 16, 13. But we're going to start at John 16, 12. You need to be real attentive to this teaching. Because this teaching will put you on a true foundational principle. To where you can examine the Bible. And understand the plan of God for the Gentile people. Because there's a dispensation of the Gentiles to the falling up of the Gentiles be filled. We are in that dis dispensation and that dispensation now is standing order on the group of people who God is dealing with. Called the Gentiles, the church, the many member body with Jesus being head of it with that group of people using the mind of Christ and not that group of people fighting naturally and having envy and strife against other people, but fighting as soldiers in the invisible realm. That's important. So we need to look at John 16, 12. I have yet, John 16, 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Listen to what he said. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. He said, I got many things to say, but you can't bear them right now. So how is he going to say it? Let's, let's look at 13. How bad? When he, the spirit of truth, spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truths. So number one, the Holy Spirit is going to guide the ones with Hebrews 3, 
the ones with the heavenly calling, the partakers, the Holy Spirit is going to be sent to guide them. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that, he, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So, now, Jesus stayed on the earth 33 and a half years. He told his disciples things. He spoke to them in parable. He told them mysteries because he told them it was for them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Well, what Jesus did not tell them, he sent the Holy Spirit to reveal what he was going to finish speaking. Because Jesus is still speaking, even though he's not walking on the earth, through the Holy Spirit and through his word, Jesus is still speaking to the born-again believer about what it takes to achieve and what he is administering and what he is dis dispensing to that group of people. Now, here is what you cannot do in rightly dividing the word. You can't go in another dispensation and pull out what he said to that group of people and apply it to another group of people just because you feel like it, because you will manipulate the Bible and bring it out of its contents. So the preachers that are preaching in the pulpit that does not teach the Bible in the dispensational seasons and into the group that God is administering to at the time he's in administering it to it will manipulate the Bible so they become false because they would tell you God said it, but God didn't say it to the particular people that are standing in order right now. I hope you're with me so far. So listen what he says. He says, John 16, 13, How bet when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truths, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mind, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore said I, that he that taketh a mine, and shall show it unto you. Talk about the Holy Spirit. This is very important. So now, so far what we've got to do is, we've got to understand, one more time, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians so we can prove what I'm saying. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 10.32 just to prove the different people that God is dealing with. 1 Corinthians 10.32. Well, we're going to go to 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offenses neither to the Jew, nor to the Gentile, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, but they may be saved. That they may be saved. It outlines the three groups of people. So now, therefore, we need to get an understanding of why a dispensation is so important. The greatest, they one of the greatest secrets of the Bible. Is Romans 16, 25. And let's go there. Romans 16, 25. Romans 16, 25 simply tells you this. Romans 16, 25. How to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel in the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. There it is. This mystery is a sacred secret which was kept secret since the world begun. He says it was kept secret from the world begun. What was kept secret? That he was going to give it to the Gentiles. Who's the author of Romans? Paul is. So Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, has a secret, a sacred secret. Paul says, whether I was in the body or whether I was out of the body, I do not know. He took me to the third heaven. And he revealed things to Paul. 
So people today walk as apostles because they said Paul did not walk with Jesus. But that can't be true because anybody that writes two-thirds of the new covenant had to have walked with God to get the revelation. I haven't seen the apostle of the day add any book to the Bible. Paul added from Romans all the way to Hebrews to the Bible because he walked with God for revelation. So he did walk with God. That's why Paul was deemed an apostle, a sent one, because he had a message to a group of people with a heavenly calling called the Gentiles. Let's look at 26. But now he's made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Now, what he said, this group of people called the Gentiles is going to have faith into obedience and obedience into faith. But it's going to be the Holy Spirit that is going to reveal to them through the Apostle Paul what I need for them to do. What we need to get an understanding in, this is nothing new. But we need to get in our mind the greatest mystery, the greatest sacred secret of the Bible was the mystery of that many member body that was in Christ that Peter them never knew that God was going to extend salvation, draft salvation into the Gentiles. That is very, very important. So now, we want to go to Acts 9 and give Paul the author the credentials so you can rightly understand that I, I'm not telling you anything wrong. I'm not making up any new doctrine. I need for you to understand that the Bible is dispensational and that God chooses different people to handle different people. God has chosen a person to handle this person, so we're going to go, and we're going to speed up a minute, but we got to get this mystery worked out so we can see this dispensation called the many-member body of Christ and who that many-member body of Christ, who's a, who was the apostle that was sent. See, it was Paul that was sent to the Gentiles, so therefore Peter, if you would understand, Peter walked with Jesus. But Peter would not mess with a Gentile. It was Paul that had to go to Peter to tell Peter he had to extend salvation to the Gentiles. It wasn't Peter that went and told Paul. It was Paul that went and told Peter. This is very important. I hope you're getting this. This is very important, okay? When you look at Acts 9, and Acts is the book called the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the apostles, the records of the apostles. So we have a record in Acts 9 of an apostle being chosen that actually did not walk on the earth with Jesus Christ. So we're going to get understanding of this apostle. And Saul, you notice that he says, Acts 9, 1, and Saul he had breathing out threatening and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him a letter to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he be found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. I'm talking about Christians, disciples. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Oh, I know you know the story, but I got to give this credibility. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the prey. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? He's asking the Lord, Lord, what, 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 what you want me to do? He says, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and then shall be told thee what thou must do. Arise and go into the city. So God is getting ready to administer to Saul, dispense to Saul what he wants him to do. And then, seven, and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. God works in the on the fourth dimension in the invisible. They hear the voice, but they're seeing no man. Paul is speaking. God is speaking. They're seeing Paul, but they're not seeing God. 
and Saul arose from the earth, and when he, his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, in a vision, which means he was dealing with Ananias in the spirit. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tartus. For behold, he prayed. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias named, then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to my, thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the, from the chief priest to bind out that called on thy name. But the Lord said unto Ananias, unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name unto the who? Gentiles. Unto the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And then I, and now and now he's went his way and entered into the house and put his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee. Listen up. You need to listen. This is why Paul is called an apostle. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou came and hast sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight for whip and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus, and straight where he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. But he, but all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on the name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dealt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Now, who did he send to the Gentiles as an apostle? Paul. So we have clarified that. So what we need to do is we need to look on which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Ephesians 3, 5, we need to rightly divide that there's a mystery going on because we need to understand that you cannot take different dispensations that God is not applying to a group of people and just say the Bible says this to this group of people. You can't even take the law and apply it all Ten Commandments off the stone to the Gentiles. That's why Paul, the author of what he gave Paul to give it to the Gentiles, say, here's what you do. If you can love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, the rest hinges on the Because we are in the dispensation of grace, and we are in the dispensation of of the fullness of the fulfilling of the Gentiles. So we got two dispensation periods of time. We got two dispensational administrations to mankind. And what is standing is mankind being filled in the season that they should be filled in called the Gentiles until they be filled. We're going to prove all this. There'll be standing order. So the Gentiles are standing order. So when we look at Ephesians, 3, 5. And here's what it says. Ephesians 3, 5. Let's start at Ephesians 3, 1. For this call, I, Paul, the one we just came out of Acts 9 talking about, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. It's documented again. So you've got a group of people. Number one, we need to get an understanding that does not fight in the natural, but fights in the spirit realm 
don't fight against flesh and blood, but they fight against spirits, principalities, rulers of darkness. So you've got a group of people with a heavenly calling. You've got an apostle that was persecuting Christians and kicking against the prick that God has now knocked down and Jesus has now revealed that he wants to give a revelation to the Gentiles. Now let's, let's just take our time a minute. What does God and Jesus want Paul to reveal to the Gentile people? God and Jesus want Paul to reveal to the Gentile people that they was a many member body, Ephesians 1, chosen in, the, in Jesus before the foundation of the world, and that many member body that Jesus the Christ was going to be head over, and that this many member body was going to be crucified with Jesus and was going to be resurrected with Jesus. And he's taking this group of people in order for them to have revelation through the Holy Spirit. He has given these, this revelation of this group of people, not to Peter, not to Matthew, not to John, not to Mark, not to Luke. He gave revelation of this group of people to Paul. So it was a mystery it was a sacred secret to all others. Even the prophets did not discuss it. So he's giving it to Paul. So let's look at it. So when we look at Ephesians 3, it says, For this call, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. He said, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you. For who? The Gentile people. Now I want you to remember in 2021, the Gentile people are still standing on them. They're, st they're, still, they're still the one that's occupying the central position in his present standing in the administration of what God is doing. Now listen to this, number two. Ephesians 3, 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, sacred secret, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Keeps talking about the sacred secret, which in other ages were not made known unto the sons of men. You, did you, hey, see, you see I'm not making this up. If you got your Bible, you will see I'm not making this up. Here's what he said in 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Go back to John 16, 13. It is being made known to you by the Spirit that the Gentiles, listen, listen, listen up, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promises in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the insearchable riches of Christ. Who did it say he was going to preach the insearchable riches of Christ to? To Gentiles. Gentiles. Who is over the church? Christ. Who is Paul? Uh, letters to the Gentiles. Let us read on. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, which from the beginning of the world was hid and no one knew but God. Not Jesus. No one knew it but God who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Now to the intent that unto the principalities, not to the Jebusites, not to the Hittites, not to the Philistines, but he said unto to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the internal according to the eternal purpose 
which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. In whom we have boldness, access, access. We the Gentiles have access. We have boldness with confidence by the faith in him. By the faith in him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Christ possessed the throne of your heart by faith. Look at 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that be that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Now, now, we got to stop right there because he just expelled something else. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. That's number one. Christ must sit on the throne of your heart. Philippians 2, 5. Because you use his mind to do whatever Christian like you're going to do. Listen to what he says. That he dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. So my question would be, if what's standing occupying the administration and the dispensation of the divine substance of what God is doing, and they're doing it without love, but they say they have a heavenly calling, but they're not grounded, rooted, and grounded in love, then they are not applying the doctrine of what God gave Saul slash Paul to tell the group of people that's standing in order in 2021 because here's what he said. Let me read it one more time real slow. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, number one, by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. So therefore, all these people that are going to church hating people because of the color they skin, hating this denomination because they're different from their denomination, the big church hating the little church, that's not being rooted and grounded in love. So therefore, you're not on 2 John 2, 9 and 10. You're not on the doctrine of Jesus Christ because God is love. Jesus is love. And if you're not rooted and grounded in love, you are not on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So I'm not even supposed to receive you into my church house or not even let you preach in my pulpit because you are not on the same doctrine that I'm on because God is love and any man that says he has God and has not love is none of his. So therefore, I can't receive you. I can't walk in agreement with you. I cannot fellowship with you because number one is your doctrine is not the doctrine that Jesus Christ gave Paul to give to the Gentiles so we have nothing in common because I'm walking in grounded in love and you are walking with your own interpretation not rooted, not grounded in love. You are walking with prejudice and racism. You are walking with a man when I'm walking with Jesus the Christ so we have nothing in common. Read your Bible. Listen to what he said. I'm going to read it one more time because this is good stuff. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That Christ may sit on the throne of your heart. How? By faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breath the length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. How you going to be filled with all the fullness of God? Let's back up. That ye that may be able to comprehend with all saints. You need to comprehend. What you need to comprehend? To know the 
learner of Christ, what do you need to comprehend? Which passes knowledge? What do you need to comprehend? That you might be filled? What do you need to comprehend? With all the fullness of God, you need to comprehend all the fullness of God. You need love. You, there's no way that you are in this season of standing dispensation of grace. And you are not rooted and grounded in love, but you are saying you are going to eternal life, which is an eternal purpose of God, delegated to the people that will obe be obedient into faith or have faith into obedience, ever which way you want to put it. If you are not rooted and grounded in love, you are not having faith into obedience, and you are not having obedience unto faith. So here we are. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Did you listen how he said that? Listen. If you ain't got power to love your neighbor as yourself because he's a different color and a different race than you, then the power of love is not working in you. If you don't have the power to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind, you don't have power to even love God. How you going to see in the dark when you can't even see the light? Let me ask that question one more time. How will you see the dark if you can't see the light? Let's read on. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end, amen, world without end, until be the glory, until him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, to him be glory in the church. Did you read how he put that? I'm not going to stay there long, I'm going to run on. Which one the beginning of the world has been hid in God, which has been hid from ages and from generations? But now it's made manifest. So let's look at Colossians 1.26. I need to give you an understanding that I'm just not picking a scripture just to get you to understand something. I'm coming from the Bible, and I want you to have what God is administering, what group of people is standing, and who the people are that he's talking about with this greatest mystery of the Bible, the group of people that he was talking about. Who are these people? They're the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? They're you. And let's look at Colossians 1.26. In Colossians 1.26, we're going to start at 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the old hope of glory, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Jesus Christ, whereunto I also labor, scribing according to his word, which worketh in me mightily. His word, John 14, 12, if you abide in me and I abide in you, the work that I do, you will do also. And greater works will you do. Listen to what he said. Whereto, whereunto I also labor, scribing according to his work and which worketh in me mightily. His work worketh in me mightily. His love works in me mightily. Because his love will not only work in me for him four degrees, all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, and all my strength, but his love will have the power to work in brotherly love for my neighbor. I don't hate people because my battle, I'm not a soldier to fight people. Not being standing order, not being a Gentile, my assignment as a soldier is to fight against principalities, rulers of darkness, spirits in high places, spirits of wickedness and evilness, demons and devils and imp. I'm not one that was birthed with a heavenly calling to in me and have strife and jealousy amongst church people because my fight is on a higher realm than that. I fight on the realm of the invisible. 
Let us move on. The question of who is the secret? Who is the secret not revealed? No, never been revealed at all. It concerns the Gentiles. That the Gentiles, that the Gentiles should be joint heirs and, and joint body partakers of the promise in Christ. We read that in Ephesians 5, 6. Has God made it known before Israel would have had an excuse? No, God never made it known to Israel. Why? They would have had an excuse why they rejected Jesus Christ. So if they would have known, but they didn't know. So, let's go to Romans 6, Romans 11, and look at something. We're not going to be there long. We need to get this point across to you because Sunday... We need to move this teaching up a notch. But I need to prove to you that the Bible is a dispensational of different characters of divine administration suited to the different times in which such administration is exercised and administered to the group of people that he's dealing with that's in standing order. Now, back when God was administering or dispensing to Israel, he was not giving anything to the Gentiles. Okay, when we look at Romans 11. We're going to go to 25. Romans 11, 25. Romans 11, 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Watch this. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of the Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto, unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching their election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet now obtain mercy through their belief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief, so that they might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches. Oh, the depth of the riches is what he's saying. Both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom the glory, to whom be glory from ever, ever, amen. Amen. For I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not confounded to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So now, we have proved so far that God has this mystery and has made it known to the Gentiles. If when you read the who is in the secret is the Gentiles. And the way that they are birthed into is faith through obedience. The question is, do we, do we believe it and obey it by acting according to it? Watch this. Abraham had several divine revelations made to him. From his call, Genesis 11, 
He was a righteous man. Genesis 12. He believed God concerning his promises of the future. Gen Genesis 13. He believed God in the promises of the land. Abraham. Now, the reason why we're dealing with Abraham is because we need to see something. Genesis 15. The seed he made would give him, it is written, Abraham believed in the Lord and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. We as the Gentiles believe the Lord and the faith of our obedience or the obedience of our faith is imputed to us for righteousness because we're in the dispensation of grace. So in this dispensation of grace, it's not what you did, it's unmerited favor. So we need to have an understanding that the Spirit is teaching by the Spirit of the Word. They contain the things which the Lord could not speak on earth for the time, for it was not then. The Gentiles was not then when Jesus was walking on the earth. When he left the earth is when he knocked Saul down, picked him Paul. So now, how can you come and apply the, the, the law to the Gentiles when what God is administering to the Gentile people is something called unmerited favor, is something called the dispensation of grace. I'm going to see law right there. I'm going to see law right there because we need an understanding. When we go back to even Luke, let's look at Luke 21, 24. When we go back to even Luke, I need to set this foundation in you because we need to deal with this group of people because this, this is who God is administering his power, his, his, his armor. This is who God is administering to. So when we look at Luke 21, 24, guess what Luke 21, 24 says? Listen to this. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So this is in Luke. This is Dr. Luke. Here's what he said. Let's go, let's go back to it again. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming to the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall ye see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and glory. Now watch this right here. When we go to Ephesians, which Paul is the author of, we want to briefly stop by Ephesians 1, and we want to look at something about Creator God. And what we want to look at about Creator God being that God is revealing his plan, his dispensational plan, here's what God is revealing in Ephesians 1. I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus by the will of God, to the saints which are at Edifus, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. To the faithful in Jesus Christ. Notice his wording. Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, in heavenly places, in Christ. He has blessed us in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children, having predestined us to be children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. He has made us accepted in the beloved because of his grace. According to his riches of his grace. Eight, wherein he has abound to us, towards us, all wisdom and prudence, having made, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, 
according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Let me say that again. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, and whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let's read on. Which in the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the person's possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion, every name that is named not only in this world but also also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in him. The church, his body, the Gentiles. Keep on reading Ephesians, and he's going to explain it to you. So therefore, stand in order now, that many member body that Jesus, Philippians 2, 5, it's going to be the thought process of that body that has spiritual gifts to operate of every man according to the measure of the gift that God has spiritually given them. That group of people right now is standing order, and they are that many member body that's standing in place to perform for God. Let me prove something. And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Listen, Ephesians 2. Where in time past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we also had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even, were, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by grace, by grace, by grace, by grace ye are saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which is God's, which God has ordained be, before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hand. He said, listen, listen, this is very important. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time, in time past Gentiles, and that the, and, and the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. In other words, Israel, the Jews, were dealt with by hand. They were made the circumcision by hand. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth. Listen to what he said, 12. He said at that time when they were circumcised by hand, you were without Christ. 
how do you apply something that you was without? Listen to what he said. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ, listen to what he said. He said, but now in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the entity, even the law of commands contained in ordinance, for to make in himself of twine one new man, so making peace, having made in himself one new man, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the Christ, by the cross, having slain the entity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were far off unto them that were nigh, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, brought into an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Three, one. I'm just going to read this and I'm through. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the Gentiles. Stand in order. The Gentiles. So number one is, the Gentiles was not in the separating of Israel to have by hand circumcision of the flesh. They didn't have a God. They didn't receive a covenant until Christ Jesus. They didn't receive an apostle or a revelation that they had been accepted as the body of Christ until God the Father, Jesus the Son, knocked Saul down, picked him up, Paul, and administered revelation, uh, uh, dispensed revelation to Paul to go tell that he was drafting the Gentiles in under the dispensation of grace. If that's what your Bible said, then you are on the doctrine of Christ. But there's no way that you're going to be a Christian in this standing order, in this standing era of 2021 without being rooted and grounded in love, in faith, in Jesus the Christ, who is head over salvation. Who is the mind process of salvation? And if you have not love and you are still thinking that you are offering your tithe and your sacrifices and, and you are doing things um, in the natural, going to church and paying tithe and, and you are doing things in the natural and you have not yet achieved anything in spirit and in truth, you are not on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You are in the wrong dispensation. You need to go back into the dispensation where all you got to do is go get a lamb or a pigeon or a dove and take it to the pastor and give it to the pastor, uh, a, a love offering, or give it to the pastor, uh, anniversary, and let the pastor go in and talk to the Lord for you. And the Lord will give you another year of an atonement. We're not in that system. We're not in that system. See, we're not physically fighting the Jebusites and the Parasites. And we're not phys physically fighting the Hittites. We fighting spirits and principalities and rules of darkness because we have a heavenly calling to wear all the armor and pray through supplication. We fight not against flesh and blood. We fight in the spiritual realm. We soldiers. We don't get entangled with the affairs of this world. We don't get intoxicated with the affairs of this world. We were called, Hebrews 3, with a heavenly calling to be partakers of what the work of Jesus Christ was to do. And the work of Jesus Christ must be in spirit and in truth. This is Pastor Samson, so we'll see you Sunday.